welcome back to another video. So today's video is another one all about cruising. This video is more focused on pre-booking. So this will be what you look for when you book a cruise, things to look out for, things that you want to have included or something that you don't want to have included things like that the cruise industry is a very competitive one there's so many different cruise lines out there that offer so many different things there are a lot of similarities between cruise lines there are a lot of things that cruise lines do similar or if they're sister companies they have sort of very very similar aspects to the cruise in general but there are also things that certain cruise lines do better or certain cruise lines do differently so I thought I'd talk a bit about a general idea of cruise lines and what they offer what guests may want from certain cruise lines and this may help if you're looking to book a cruise and maybe even help if you've booked a cruise and you're wanting to maybe find out a bit more about what the cruise line offers. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you find this helpful and interesting and after this you'll probably want to book a cruise. So just like a normal land holiday when you book a cruise or when you're thinking about booking a cruise there are certain things that you will look for. So there's the destination, so the itinerary, where you want to go, where you're thinking of visiting. There's the duration, so if you maybe want to do a shorter one, like a taster cruise, just to start off with if you've not cruised before, or if you're wanting to do a longer duration that will have more ports that you can visit. There's also the budget that you have in mind, so the price of the cruise. So if you have more of like an affordable budget, you won't want to look at maybe higher priced cruises because you probably won't be able to afford them based on the budget that you've got and then there's also what's included so what do you want to have included so if you wanted it to be all inclusive or if you wanted to pay as you go with drinks that's also something to think about when you book a cruise now this stage is very much the same as when you're booking a land holiday so when you're thinking about booking a cruise you think about the same things really as, as when you go and book you know like flights and accommodation and a resort it's sort of exactly the same the only difference you would have is probably mainly the itinerary because obviously on a cruise you're not just visiting one place you're going to be visiting quite a few different destinations so when you book a cruise one of the main things you will need to look at is what ship you will be sailing on as you know there are hundreds of ships out there to book on and to sail on there's so many things to look out for there's the size of the ship if it's adults only or if you're wanting a family friendly one there are so many different things to think about when you're looking at the ship so in terms of the ship size do you want to go on a mega ship that's what they call them for example the biggest ship currently in in the world this will change probably I think next year but the biggest ship currently is Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas that is absolutely massive it is literally like a city fl a floating city other ships that are very big in size are Norwegian Primer that has just I believe started sailing or just visited Southampton um, a few days ago there's also Carnival Mardi Gras and there's also P&O's Iona and her sister ship Avia, which is coming into service in December. Now, I know people say a bigger ship means more people, which can be worse sometimes. That's not always the case. I personally prefer the bigger ships because there's more of an atmosphere. There's more people to get to know. I mean, yes, you don't have to go on a cruise to get to know other people, but that's what the cruise life is. You're always gonna end up speaking to someone or spending time with some people. But there's, I feel there's more of an atmosphere, more of a, a good positive vibe. And there's usually a lot more to do on board because they obviously have to cater for the many more passengers that they can accommodate on the ships. So there's cinemas, there's water slides, there's more swimming pools, there's escape rooms, mini golf, rock climbing. There's all sorts of things to do on these bigger ships. And this does not mean that if you go on a bigger ship, the price will be more expensive, the price will increase. That is not the case. In most cases, the higher priced cruises are the ones that are the smaller ships, the more intimate ships. I have been on mid-sized ships and the larger ships. I haven't been on 
a really really small ship i would like to just to experience it but i do prefer the bigger ships i just like the atmosphere on board and there's a lot more people on board as well i just like that now the biggest ship i've been on i don't know specifically like exact numbers but i know it's very very close between two there's britannia so p and o's britannia and then there's royal caribbean's adventure of the seas they're two very similar in size they're very i think similar in in terms of passenger capacity i feel like adventure of the seas is around 4000 and britannia is i think just under that so yeah i may be wrong so please let me know if i am but i feel like adventure of the seas just has the 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 winner there and from my personal experience on that cruise it did not feel packed there was it wasn't majorly busy this was even this was pre-covid this was 2014 it was my first ever cruise as well so there was no negatives in terms of going on a bigger ship my first time i thought it was amazing but there's nothing wrong with wanting to go for a smaller ship now from having spoken to a lot of guests that have been on smaller ships for example p and aurora she's the smallest ship in their fleet as well as other ships like the Tui ships, Morella, they're, they're very small in size. I think they're about 2,000, 2,500. Others include Regent Seven Seas, uh, Viking. They're all smaller. They're not sort of competing to be like a mega ship, like Wonder of the Caesars. So having spoken to guests, passengers that I've spoken to, you know, on, on previous cruises, they say that the smaller ships feel more relaxed. A lot of guests are there to just really sort of have a nice relaxing cruise not really want to do much entertainment activity show excursions they're just wanting free time alone time to chill and relax so when you're booking a cruise you need to think of what you want to do on the ship because you're going to be on the ship the majority of the time obviously when you're at port you can get off or you can choose not to if you wanted to but a lot of the time you're going to be on the ship walking around the ship seeing sort of things that are familiar because you'll be seeing them a lot so you need to think about if you want to be on a ship to relax to sort of wind down to have some free time or if you want it to be like a party a nice vibe you know if, if you're with family children you need to obviously think about their needs and and make sure there's something for them to do on board so there's definitely something to think about when you're booking a cruise so if you don't have children or if you want to go onto a cruise ship that doesn't have any children on it because i know that is a preference for some guests which is absolutely fine i sort of completely understand in that aspect but there are cruise lines and cruise ships which are adults only so virgin voyages um, all of their ships are adults only there's uh, Arcadia and Aurora on P&O, which are adults only. So there are definitely options if you're wanting to go on an adults only cruise. So another thing to look out for when booking a cruise or when you're looking to book a cruise is comparing different cruise lines. And that's comparing them in various different ways. So if you're wanting more of a budget cruise, you need to obviously look at which cruise lines are more affordable or if you're wanting luxury high-end looking at the ones that are higher in price there's also thinking about like international cruises so if you are british and if you're wanting to stay with a british cruise line i know p and o is a british cruise line everything is in pounds i know that's not an issue for some people but i know for some people it is just from experience and knowledge within the cruise industry I know that if you're wanting more of like a, a party, sort of fun family vibe, that will be Disney, Royal Caribbean, definitely Carnival, Carnival like a good party, and Norwegian, Norwegian's another good one as well. If you're wanting more of high-end luxury, that would be Viking, Cunard, Princess. Yeah, so it's, it's just good to look and compare the different lines and see which ones offer what now let's move on to another important aspect of when you're looking to book a cruise is the itinerary now i know for the majority of people you are booking a cruise to go to specific destinations and i what i absolutely love i've said this in previous videos what i love about cruising is you go to so many different places in one holiday i have been to some absolutely beautiful places 
I have been to Spain and Portugal on one cruise. I have done a Baltic cruise, that was stunning. And I've done fjords, which I wouldn't even think to go to Norway on a holiday. And then I went on a seven night one with P&O around the fjords and it was just stunning. And our bucket list was going on a Caribbean cruise and we are so lucky that we have booked one to go in November this year. So a couple of months to wait, but we're so lucky and we're so excited to go on that one as well because we've never been on a hot like cruise. So this is good. Now, every cruise line do hundreds of itineraries. I'm pretty sure there's only like a few areas of the actual world that ships don't visit for obvious reasons. But if you're wanting to go somewhere specific, pretty much you will find it on a cruise itinerary. You you will. <laughs> also thinking about the type of duration of the cruise. So I personally would suggest someone who's never cruised before to do a shorter duration. And the shortest duration of cruise that you can do is two nights. And that is usually so I'm just thinking from Southampton, usually you'd go Southampton, Guernsey and back to Southampton. And that is just getting, they call it taster cruises. So that's just getting a feel for the ship, the actual experience as a whole, getting on and off at a port and just experiencing the cruise life and seeing if you like it. Because if you don't wanna do it again, you're only on that ship for two nights. So you're not stuck on it forever. <laughs> that's what we did first. We did a two nighter and we didn't want to get off the ship. We got home and were like, right, then we booked another one for like later on in the year, or I think next year. So you just have to think about if you're unsure, if you're not 100% whether you want to do it as an actual holiday, do a two-nighter. It's really, really, it's not expensive at all. It's really, really affordable. And you can actually get a feel for it. And if you like it, you can then go and book another one. Cruises are a various, variety of durations you can do two nights the longest i've seen is i think 110 which was a cunard world voyage there's they do world cruises uh they do like 30 nights 21 14 7 they do like 40 50 nights as well and those longer durations you will visit more ports obviously and you can actually visit some interesting places. You can actually go through the Panama Canal. That I've heard is amazing. I'm yet to do that though. <laughs> but you really are sort of spoilt for choice in terms of how, how many nights you wanna do. There's really, there's no sort of limit and you can even do back-to-back -back cruises as well. I, again, I'm, I'm yet to do this also, but I'd love to do like a seven night and then just stay on the ship and do another seven night on another itinerary. I'd, I, just watching people get off and I'm still on it. I'd love that. <laughs> Another thing with the itinerary and the sort of duration is also if you want to fly somewhere. So you've got more freedom with looking at, at booking if you're happy to fly. So a fly cruise essentially. Now that is obviously dependent on where you live. With me, I live in like the south of, of England. So I can go to a lot of places from Southampton. So I won't fly, I would just drive down to Southampton and then I get on the cruise. But there are some itineraries that you fly to because you get more, you can visit more ports, you get more out of the cruise because you're literally in the area anyway. So there's no days lost because you're sailing to get to that destination. But if you don't like flying, if you don't like, you know, flying heights, anything like that, there are so many embarkation ports around the world, you are going to be close to at least one of them. <laughs> and another important thing to think about when booking a cruise is what you want to have on board. And that also includes, that also means what do you want to have included in your fare. So a lot of companies, it will be full board. A lot of cruise companies across the board will do at least full board. So that means you get all your food, and your accommodation and everything like that, it will just be that you pay drinks. You sort of pay as you go with your drinks. But there are different ways to add drinks packages on. So you can add a drinks package pre-cruise or during the cruise, but I believe there is a rule regarding adding it on on board. You have to do it, I think, within the first two days. Um, but I don't know if that's like with every cruise line. I know it's 
the majority that I've been with. And you can get a variety of drinks packages. If you don't drink alcohol, you can get a soft drinks package, which is water, juices, soft drinks, everything like that, apart from obviously anything alcohol. Or you can do an all-in, so all-inclusive package where you get everything included and you don't really have to worry about sort of paying as you go. Or some cruises do all-inclusive packages, like included in the fare so you don't have to think about drinks on board it's already included within your fare so that would just be another thing to think about when you go to make a booking if you think you're going to get your money's worth with the drinks package or just purchase it as part of the fare when you book i know during our baltic two-week cruise on um, a princess cruise ship a few years ago my sister purchased the hot drinks package I don't know how much it was, but she definitely got her money's worth out of it because every time I saw her, she was holding a coffee cup. <laughs> there are also other add-ons that you can purchase, again, pre-cruise or mid-cruise, like whilst you're on board. The main one being Wi-Fi. I know a lot of cruise lines don't include internet in any of the packages, any of the fares. You just sort of pay as you go. You purchase like minutes, essentially, when you go on board and you just sort of use the internet and then pay for it with obviously your cruise card you can do that i personally have never done that because i just wait to be docked at a port and i could just use 4g usually all the ports have wi-fi around the area so i've never needed it but i know this will obviously differ because some people may want to contact home maybe even for work purposes things like that as well so if that is something that is like a necessity then you can purchase it on board. Now, just like a like land holiday resort, all of your entertainment is included on a cruise. So that's uh, quizzes, theatre shows, karaoke, the lot. You just turn up at the venue that, that they've sort of advertised for in your sort of, you know, planner booklet, and you just watch the show, play the quiz, sing a song, and it's all included in, in the fare of your holiday. Now this is the same every cruise. Every, every cruise line has the same entertainment's always included. There may be some things that cost like a surcharge. So I know on Royal Caribbean they have like um, like dodgems and other things like that. I believe that you get a free go, but I think anything extra you have to like pay for. But again, I could be wrong with that. But other other cruise lines there can be a surcharge for something extra. But I know when we went on Adventure of the Seas, which is again Royal Caribbean's ship that we went on, they there was mini golf there, like crazy golf on one of the top decks. That was all included. That was free. You just literally went and got your sort of your what's it called? Your stick putt. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a golfer. <laughs> and your ball. And you just like put it back when you were done. So that was all included. So another thing that you have to think about when you're booking a cruise holiday, this probably isn't something that you would need to think about when booking a normal land holiday. So when booking a cruise, you can book different type of cabins, so different grades of cabin. There are usually four main grades. So there's an inside cabin, an outside or sea view cabin, depending on the cruise line, that's they sort of give you different names. There's balcony or veranda cabins, and then there's your suites. All of the names are sort of self-explanatory. An inside cabin is inside the ship you don't get a window you don't get a balcony and they are usually they're the more affordable options they're much less in price there's not a huge lot of room in there but you're by no means like confined claustrophobic anything like that you will be fine in that cabin it's just that you don't get the window or the outside space then you've got an outside or sea view which means you've got a window looking out and again that's they're all all cabins are same sizes apart from obviously the sweeps <laughs> but the difference between balcony outside and inside is if you get a view or not essentially and then balcony obviously clues in the name you get the outside space which is a balcony you usually get two chairs and a table as well so and usually all cabins are based on two sharing but you can get cabins up to four people so if you were in a cabin a balcony cabin for four people they would still only have the two chairs so you just may have to take it in turns about sitting on the balcony <laughs> with the balcony 
grade cabin there are sort of additional types of balconies you can get a deluxe balcony or deluxe veranda which means you just get extra space beside the bed which is usually a sofa so you get a, a sofa space there so you essentially get the bed part like the bedroom and then right next to it you get almost like a living space which is a bed sort of table like coffee table and then you get sort of the vanity unit with the um tv above it so that's sort of a, a deluxe one and then your suites are the highest price in in terms of the different grades of cabin there's there's usually two bedrooms a bedroom and a living area some cabins have like an actual walk-in wardrobe i know royal caribbean have like two stories and like a slide going down i'll never be able to afford that because they're like seventy thousand pounds not in my budget <laughs> but there are a variety of cabins that you can choose from. What we do as well, if, we, if we're unsure, if we've booked a type of cabin and we don't know what they look like, I mean, we usually look before, just so we know what we're paying for, but you, we also watch YouTube videos because there's a lot of channels out there that film like room tours, like cabin tours, just so you get an idea of what you're getting and a feel of, of the cabin and the space and what's there, what's not, in terms of like storage space, um, USB plugs and um, plug sockets. If it's a UK or European or USA plug, that's always good to do when you watch a video is check what sort of, if they're international plug sockets or not. So that's all of the main aspects of sort of the pre-booking process that's usually what we look for when we think about going on holiday thinking about booking a holiday those are the main things that we look for and I'm pretty sure it's it's similar in every household and every family when you book somewhere there's always certain aspects certain like a checklist that you want to have but I hope that helped when booking a cruise and if there is anything else that I've missed please let me know because <laughs> I know there's a lot of like avid cruisers out there that have probably done a lot more than me and probably have missed out some things so please comment below if there's anything else that I've missed or there's something that I don't do which you do which could be helpful because I'm sure there's different processes for different people when they book a holiday but I hope that has helped someone when they're booking a holiday because I know when we booked our first cruise we had no idea what was going on we we honestly thought getting on a cruise ship would just be like a ferry and it would be like planks of wood and you can see the bottom we i say that every time when i say that i when i booked my first crew that is literally what we thought and we got in and we were like oh my god there's lifts there's like elevators there's marble floors like it was crazy <laughs> but if you've got any questions anything again that i've missed anything that anyone wants to add please comment below and i hope you enjoyed the video i might do another video like this if i feel like i've missed anything but yeah i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in another video